Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining today's EAC webinar. This is Cassie Stumo. I am the Marketing Specialist at EAC. Today, we will be talking about how you can deliver powerful design scalability with augmented reality experiences. Uh, we will begin today's session with an introduction of EAC, and then Todd Liebenau will be taking over. Uh, this session is being recorded. Unless there are any technical difficulties, everyone will uh, receive a replay after the webinar, uh, and any questions in the queue will be answered after the presentation. All right, so for those of you who don't know who we are, um, I'll start off with a quick introduction of EAC. Our mission is to transform the way uh, businesses design, manufacture, connect to, and service their products. Our goal is to help companies bring their products to market with the right tools and resources to be successful. We have a range of products and services that we sell, including CAD, PLM, and SLM software, and desktop 3D printers. We implement the Internet of Things and augmented reality into business strategies, and we offer help with design and engineering projects. Um, and we also offer various training courses and mentoring. Uh, today, we are focusing on uh, how you can transform your operations by using the right augmented reality authoring tool. I'll pass it on to Todd to discuss how you can add AR content creation to your skill set. And Todd, I will let you know when we've got you. Let's see, let's uh, push a couple buttons here. And I'll do show my screen. And I've got a couple of different screens, so let's make sure we're looking at the right one. It looks right um, to me. So uh, just verify for me if you would. Um, we're looking at the uh, Creo Parametric with the snowmobile. Is that right? Yep. That's okay, right. cool. All right, sounds like we're set to go. So um, obviously we're starting off today's discussion uh, with uh, CAD data that's native to Creo Parametric, uh, but it doesn't necessarily have to be, right? So uh, what we're doing here is um, taking some information from the design, uh, in this case, it was uh, done in Creole Parametric. But uh, let's start with the end in mind here. What if we wanted to take a look at this uh, snowmobile and uh, look at creating some service information, uh, maybe do some repair or replacement on this front ski, uh, and how would we actually share that with an end customer such that they could you know, uh, uh, do that repair on their own, right? So instead of having to, uh, uh, you know, go into a, to the shop and you know, have a service tech uh, kind of tear things apart, what would happen if we could, um, you know, have a place on the web where the customer could go and maybe purchase the parts, um, have them shipped out, and then uh, you know do that repair on their own if they're if they're so inclined to do that. So um, I thought we'd start here, kind of with the end in mind, and kind of back into how did we get there. So uh, if we take a look at the augmented reality uh, experience, um, we've got uh, the ability to take this information and uh, put it up on on the web, and then take a look at that, uh, say for example, on a phone. So in this case, I've got my phone connected here. So let's get into this. I want to just kind of swipe up. We're going to use uh, a Vuforia Studio and take a look at this augmented reality experience. And so we've got this uh, little code, and this can either be what's called a thing mark or a QR code. And we just basically point it at this, and we're going to load up the information here uh, for this snowmobile. So it takes just a second here while we load in the data. And uh, we'll do this. Uh, this is the augmented reality. So I really don't have a snowmobile on my desk, obviously, but uh, we can go ahead and just uh, tap to place that. And we can, uh, you know, again, this is the augmented reality, right? So now I've got this player snowmobile effectively right in front of me on my desktop, and I get to interact with this uh, and actually do different things. So I can zoom in, kind of spin around, and, uh, you know, kind of check this thing out. And I don't necessarily have to uh, have this in the shop. Uh, I can do a design review in the conference room, or I can take a look at uh, doing the repair or uh, whatever I need to just by kind of using my phone and pointing it at the uh, at the the object. So I've got this little uh, icon down here in the bottom, and it's going to give me steps. For example, we we've, we've built the experience here to kind of show you what it looks like to maybe do some repair on the front portion of this ski. So we got some buttons and we can click on this and say, hey, let's take a look at what it takes to, uh, you know, to take this apart. So you uh, need a wrench and a screwdriver. Go ahead and click on this and we're going to see the, the screwdriver kind of jump in here and, and then uh, show what it looks like to, to take this apart. So there's a screwdriver coming in and there's a wrench in the backside and we loosen that up and we can go to the next step there. We take the screw out. Go ahead and click the next down here. And then we can say, okay, now with a couple of wrenches, we need to take the bolt out that holds the, the other end of that. Uh, and we'll take that out. 
right? And then the next thing is here, we'll t I guess this is the third step, we'll take that, uh, that bolt out, a couple of different wrenches there, you can zoom in on that, kind of see what's happening there. A little tough to see maybe that there's a screw that's popping out there. And then we'll replace the loop, the loop from the front of the ski, right? So we'll pop that guy out and take that apart. So again, it's you know real time and kind of interacting with the uh, with the object, and I don't necessarily have to uh, watch a video. I, I can go back and just take a look at this thing on my desk on its own. What else can we do with this, right? So we're just going to reload the data here because I'm going to basically reset that experience. I can touch off on different components um, inside that uh, assembly, and we'll get this guy uh, reloaded here, and I can touch off on the ski, and it'll give me information for how much that ski costs or uh, uh, you know, uh, other different parts. So we click on that, basically just tapping on it with my screen. And there I've got pricing information. I can get a brand new ski for about 200 bucks. And so, uh, you know, click on the spring for the, for the shock absorber assembly and get information for that or the loop itself. All right. So this is kind of the end experience. And there's a lot more that you can do with this. You can actually have this read real time sensor information. So you can get uh, data coming back from the engine as far as, uh, you know, what the temperature is, what the oil pressures or, you know, whatever dynamic real time information you want to get from uh, your uh, assembly. So or your, your product. Um, so it's what we would call a smart connected product, right? So you're getting real time information back that gives you, um, you know, quantitative information about how your how your uh, product is performing uh, out in the field. So that's that's the augmented reality experience, right? So you just use your phone or tablet or what have you to go ahead and, and start to uh, interact with your product. I'll go ahead and, and um, set that down, and we'll go back to take a look. How do we get there? Right, so we start off with uh, with the CAD data, and again, this can be you know any flavor of CAD, right? So uh, we kind of start here, and then we're going to use another tool here, uh, Creo Illustrate. We'll go ahead and bring this guy up. We've got a couple of other windows here. Let's get focused on the one we want to touch on, Creo Illustrate. So what we're going to do here is basically interact with our model and create the different steps that we might want to share with the customer or the end user. So again, to do this, we're just leveraging the, the CAD data and we can go ahead and create different figures or basically different assembly uh, steps. So we'll go ahead and, and use this current view and then we can go ahead and take a look. So this is an illustration tool that's got a couple of different use cases, or at least a couple. Uh, we're talking today specifically about the augmented reality where we're gonna allow people to interact with our products dynamically. You can also use the Creo Illustrate tool for creating um, images and illustrations for technical publications and other type documents uh, that could be either print, uh, printed or it can be dynamic and, and shared on the web. So the Creo Illustrate tool is sort of a gateway tool that takes you from your product design into sharing it into uh, manufacturing and service and, and other customer experience type um, um, uh, applications. So we've got our assembly. What we'll do then next is create a sequence, right? So this is basically the process that you'd go through to uh, uh, take the information from the design and then step through what the what somebody might need to do to perform that assembly or disassembly sequence. So uh, we'll go ahead and just select on the components just like we did in the, in the model or we saw in the augmented reality experience. Lots of tools here, right? So we can go ahead and say, let's uh, maybe we want to uh, pick a component and maybe we've got uh, this uh, this ski is one complete assembly in this model. So let's take a look at uh, maybe some other options here. We can take this bolt and I'm just gonna go ahead and show an effect here. I might actually flash that in a certain color. We'll flash that in green. And then if we wanted to transpose that or transform that to a new location, I'll just use the transformation tool. You get the nice little gimbal that pops up here and I can use the hoops and arrows to kind of drag that component around uh, to show the disassembly sequence. Then I can, uh, while I've got that selected, I can go ahead and say, let's let's actually fade that out, right? So I can actually kind of turn that off. Down here in the bottom, we've got this little track uh, keyframe editor. So it's keeping track of all of the different steps that we're going through uh, while we're doing our disassembly sequence. And then you can kind of use these as the different steps or sequences uh, when we do our, uh, when we go to create the, the augmented reality experience. So other different components on here, if we wanted to transform the ski now, we can go ahead and, and uh, do that. What we'll do first though is create another step, right? So each one of these steps is gonna be um, a sequence in that we're gonna actually use to maybe create a button to push to advance forward stepwise for the disassembly sequence. So we'll pick on our component, maybe we wanna go ahead and say, we'll do that same flash or maybe we'll do something different. We'll pulse that in a different color and then we'll do our transformation on that and move him down to this location, something like that. 
So it's a it's a kind of an iterative process to kind of peel your assembly apart, or you can bring things together and put things together, right? So it's not like you always have to uh, disassemble things. Uh, you can go either direction um, as desired. We'll go ahead and, and then fade that back out when we're done. And so you can see the components are kind of uh, being removed sequentially. Now you've got lots of other options as far as how you control the display of the items here. Right, so you've got the sort of a model tree um, that you can interact with and you can select either whole assemblies or individual components, either from the graphics window or from the model tree uh, to make your selection and make modifications, right? So it's a really easy interface to manipulate uh, the components and, and uh, move things around. So for example, let's uh, make another step here. We'll move this guy off to the side and then fade him out too, same as before. We'll go ahead and let's uh, fade that guy out. So you can see the process. It's really pretty easy um, to disassemble things or bring things together to create the different uh, steps in your sequence. Once that's done, um, you kind of manipulate things the way that you'd like. Then you go ahead and publish that back out. So what we're going to do in this case is publish that back out. And this is creating uh, what's called a PVZ file, right? So in this case, it's just a, a published representation or published view of that object. And the reason that we're going to do that is that's where, that's the file, the input that we're going to use in the Viewphoria Studio tool to create um, the augmented reality experience. So again, starting from the CAD model, wherever that comes from, whether that's uh, you know Creo or some other file type, uh, you can bring this into the Creo Illustrate tool uh, and then create your uh, steps for your, uh, your sequences that you want to use in your augmented reality. And then from there, uh, we'll use the uh, Studio tool here. This is actually um, uh, Vuforia. And what we're going to do here is, is bring this all together into this uh, 3D experience. So to start with here, we've got this 3D container, right, which is basically the environment that you're going to live in when you have your augmented reality experience. So we've got our snowmobile that's assembled here. And we've also got the, uh, this little uh, thing mark or that uh, QR code that we had. And so you can drag those back in. Here we have a thing mark if you wanted to bring that back in. Just kind of drop that in place here. We've already got one, uh, but that's how you do that. Um, we'll just go ahead and say cancel. And that's going to live inside this model. We've got our spatial target that's right here. So that's a spatial target for the ski in this case that tells that ski where it's going to be assembled. And we've also got uh, uh, spatial targets for other, other parts in the assembly. So our model is here, right? So this is all of the, the CAD geometry that comes in and then we place that. And then, uh, so we've got the ability to create these dynamic interactions with this. So this is the 3D version of it. And so you'll uh, tie in different resources. So here's where we've actually uploaded this um, top level assembly, if you will, the component that is the snowmobile. And we brought that and basically placed that in, in space in this location and obviously you can you know, really accurately position that if you need to. You can scale that or rotate that as needed. Then uh, from there, you, you can build out the 2D experience. So this is how people are going to interact with the uh, the object in, in their phone or tablet or what have you. So in this case, we've got this 2D window. And so here's where we would place the different uh, images for uh, when you touch on, on the different objects. So here's the ski loops, here's the, the uh, springs and other different components. You've got a ski and you can tie in logic. So when you actually touch on that specific item in your in your model, right, this little window is going to pop up. So here's the 2D experience for that. And if we preview that, what you'll see in here in just a minute is you're going to get a representation of either a phone or a tablet. And you get to choose whether that's going to be in portrait or landscape mode. And it'll load up this information in just a minute. And you can see how you can interact with this thing in real time, you know, kind of spin it around and pick on the components and, you know, interact with it just like you would if you were um, in uh, in your phone or in your tablet manipulating the model. So to build the experience, you, you, you'll need the, the 3D objects that you want to interact with, uh, and then you sort of overlay this interface over the top of it, and um, that's how you actually interact with the components is, is that kind of tying these two objects together. So back here at our 3D container, if we look at the 3D view for this, um, this um, Vuforia uh, Studio here is a nice um, 
design environment, if you will, development environment that allows you to bring in different components. Here's the other items for the 2D overlay, right? So we'll have this is uh, this is the different buttons that comprise the 2D interface, and we have the different buttons and the different images down here. And it's really a very much a drag and drop in, uh, situation. So we have the different resources here. Uh, you have the different images that you'll upload to to bring into the 2D environment. Um, and build out that user interface. Uh, but if you need to get into uh, some other advanced things, there is an ability to do some JavaScripting. Uh, we'll just touch on that briefly, right? So here's uh, the ability to write code behind that. So if you wanna actually have an interaction with um, uh, the objects and um, you can uh, link or bind objects together here and then tie them together with JavaScript code um, if, uh, if that's required. But in general, most of this information is going to be very much drag and drop uh, with respect to, uh, you know, interacting with the objects in the screen and the uh, uh, studio environment. So that's a really an, a really high and, and fast overview of uh, of the uh, tool set and how it works. Uh, again, it's you know kind of coming in through Creo Illustrate and then uh, using the Vuforia Studio to create the experience, which is both uh, the 3D and the, the 2D interface that you can build out to uh, to allow your users to interact with your assemblies. Cassie, do we have any questions at this point or? Um. I do have one question. Um, as far as data goes, um, does it have to be Creo data? No, it doesn't, right? Um, so uh, the uh, Creo Illustrate is really sort of the gateway uh, for uh, bringing in the data into the environment here. So if we went back and looked at the Creo Illustrate tool, um, the process here is, is done with either linking or embedding uh, the data. Right, so if you were gonna um, say uh, you wanted to link or embed the data, we just said link, for example, your options here for file types are, are gonna be pretty varied or pretty diverse, right? So by default, it's obviously gonna wanna look for Creo type data, uh, but there's other types of data that you can look at as well using the Creo Unite functionality. You can bring in all of those file types, you know, your SolidWorks, CATIA, NX, that type of thing. But you can also bring in IGIS or STEP or Inventor or um, you know, Solid Edge. So uh, very much, um, trying to be CAD neutral with respect to the uh, type of data that we're able to work with. And again, this is the sort of the, um, the gateway from the CAD tools into the illustration, either for you know, a publication like a operator's manual or installation manual or something like that, uh, or the augmented reality type experiences. Um, we've got... We've got a note in the queue saying that that was really cool. Um, I do agree that was a great demonstration, but there is one thing I've learned over the years. Cool doesn't normally get approved by accounting. Can you provide some insight about how this returns real value? Sure. So think about it from, well, there's lots of different ways, right? So uh, the first one that comes to mind is training. Another one would be um, service. Um, so one customer that we're working with is is actually considering uh, using this platform for both of those cases, right? So they're actually working with a, a manufacturer of uh, industrial equipment, you know, like uh, vehicles and that kind of stuff. And what they're looking at doing is um, for the couple different use cases. One is for rental and one is for direct ownership. So they've got these, uh, you know, different types of machines that customers can either rent out or purchase on their own. And what they want to do is provide information for the user um, how do you do regular maintenance? You know, you got to go and check the oil uh, on your vehicle, but where is that? You know, where's the dipstick? How do you get to it? Um, or if you need to check, uh, you know, certain uh, belt tensions or things like that, you need instructions to actually tell somebody not only how to do it, but how often to do it. So there might be daily service that's required, there might be weekly or there might be quarterly service that's required. And each of those uh, different scenarios is gonna you know, require a different set of instructions. So for, the, for that uh, maintenance standpoint, gosh, you can have these uh, augmented reality experiences that, that somebody grabs a tablet and walks around the machine and says, okay, I need to go back and check the oil in, in, my, um, in my loader. Here's where I go to do that. I pop the panel, there's the dipstick right over there because it overlays right over the top of uh, the real live, um, you know, engine, 
right? So it's augmented reality. It's it's not virtual reality. It's augmented reality. This uh, geometry that we'd see in the experience lays over the top of the real engine. So it's going to highlight where that dipstick is, and it's going to tell you, hey, go pull that out, and then it should be between the two marks on the stick, or you need to check a fluid level, or what have you, and those are the daily checks. And you can actually set that up stepwise so that when you completed that, you hit the button on your screen on your tablet and it takes you to the next step so it will walk you through the entire checklist of items that you need to go through to perform the daily maintenance right so then the, the the other option would be training how do i run this loader what are all the what are all the buttons and controls and you know foot pedals and how do i actually make this thing do what i want it to do same type thing you can you know be sitting in the cab of the of the of the loader and then say okay uh, the, the left joystick does this and if you move it you know inward or outward it does this and it's going to make the bucket go up and down or the boom go in or out or whatever right so you get this augmented reality experience that actually shows the operator how do you run this vehicle and you know run it safely and and um, make sure that you're you know where all the controls are that uh, allow you to run the vehicle so there's just a couple off the top of my head. Now, those could you do training without this? Yeah, absolutely. But again, this the augmented reality is going to overlay the actual real geometry in in real life. So you know you know which level lever you're supposed to grab or which button you're supposed to push at what time uh, to make sure that things do what you want. So that's just a couple of use cases off the top of my head. Um, could also be used for assembly, right? So you could um, show somebody uh, what are the steps that you need to do to assemble something, right? So which components do you need? You grab them from the bin, they're they're sitting on, on your workbench in front of you, which tools do I need? What's the proper order to assemble things? Uh, again, you can have a checklist that you'd go through, you push the button or, or use, uh, if you're using the, um, the hollow lens or some other haptic type input goggles or something like that, you can make gestures um, to actually interact with that, uh, um, uh, experience to take you to the next step. So that's one of the other things that I've um, seen it used for recently was uh, assembly instructions. How do I, how does the uh, operator put the assembly together in the right order and make sure that it's built correctly? So it's going to impact uh, the ability to assemble things, but also speed up the process for assembling things, improve quality, right? So that kind of addresses the how do I get this justified? It's not just cool, but it can actually impact uh, productivity and quality as well. Yeah, Todd, I know that one of our customers is actually using the HoloLens to do just that. Can you talk about the HoloLens for a little bit? Um, yeah, so that's um, something I ha haven't had direct experience with. I know we have one there in the office. Um, I haven't had the opportunity to work with that directly just yet. But in general, uh, it's going to be a device that you put on. Uh, you know, it's kind of like ski goggles in a way. Uh, and it's not going to be, um, how should I say this? It's not virtual reality. It's not going to block out or occlude your view of the world. It's basically going to be a screen that kind of overlays um, uh, what you're going to see so you look through the hololens to see the world around you but then all of the stuff that we are looking at here in the experience um let's just pop this back up in here to, to get to this all of the stuff that you're seeing here when we preview this uh is going to be overlaid uh in the geometry or in the world in front of you so there might be buttons that you can interact with or push to turn things on or off um, um but again, you're seeing that, and so as you turn your head, all right, that you're gonna, you can walk around your assembly, or you know, that you can see the the model move as you're kind of manipulating it or walking around it, experiencing it um, in in the uh, augmented reality. Very cool. I don't see any other questions in the queue. Is there anything else you want to add? Uh, yeah, no, I agree with the cool factor, but I think there are there is a lot of business cases that can be developed for this, uh, and it's um, uh, something that's pretty dynamic, it's pretty exciting. It's it's, uh, it's improvements and enhancements being made on a almost a daily basis for this, and, and um, yeah, it's really cool to be able to be a part of this and um, share this with customers and and look at uh, developing use cases and, and bringing this to the field. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Todd for that great demo. I think we will give um, you guys a little bit of time back today. So thank you so much for joining us on today's webinar on how you can deliver powerful design scalability uh, with augmented reality experiences. Um, we appreciate the time you took to uh, be with us this morning. Um, and like I said, um, as long as there are no technical difficulties, everyone will be uh, receiving a replay of the webinar shortly. So please reach Before out to Todd if you have any yeah, questions.
yeah, I wanted to mention one last thing. It just struck me, right? Yeah. If there's questions as far as um, how do I access this or can I kick the tire on this on my own? What what do I do, right? Mm -hmm. um, did we have a link that we were going to share with them or how did you want to um, uh, share that information out? Yep, that'll be included um, in the uh, webinar replay. So thank you so much. Um, again, reach out to Todd um, if you have any questions and have a great rest of your day, everyone.